Hello there, this is Aurora and today we are going to use Milkshape 3D to create a simple model of a health kit. As you can see, we already have our reference here. It's a Doom style health kit, simple box that we're going to be making. And here in this folder that I have created expressly for the purpose of creating this new model is the old Half-Life Health Kit model which we can look at using Half-Life Model Weaver. So I have exp uh, I have brought in this model so that I have a size reference for uh, the size of the items that we're going to be making. So the first thing is we're going to go to Milkshape Tools Kratisto's Half-Life Model Decompiler and then we shall navigate to the Health Kit folder and decompile this file uh, w underscore medkit t um, is a texture file. It's, it's basically when uh, you choose to separate the model file and the texture file into two different things. Some Half-Life models have this and some of them don't. Anyway, successfully decompiled. Now let's import it into Milkshape. Import Half-Life SMD And this looks like it's a reference. Half-Life models, when they're not compiled yet, they have uh, SMD files and the uh, reference meshes as well as the animations both have the SMD file type. So you just have to look for the file name that obviously seems like that's, that's the uh, mesh reference. So this one is it. And I'm gonna uncheck rename bones. I'm gonna import triangles, which is the mesh, and skeleton, which is the, you know, it's it's rigged and animated. <coughs> I'm gonna maximize this one view part. Right click on the screen and maximize. It's got my old health kit here, so I'm just gonna build the new one next to it. <coughs> So we're going to create a box. I'm going to select the box from the uh, tools and create a box approximately the size of a health box. And then right click, change project in the front. And I'm going to right click, make this wireframe. From select options, take vertex. I'm going to select these two bottom, actually four bottom vertexes, which is don't see the uh, ones that overlap, and then move them. I'm going to uncheck X and Z because we only want to move it along the Y axis. Select these, move them up a little bit. That's probably around the size that we're looking for. And then this health kit seems to have like a lid on it. So next up I'm gonna create create the lid. I'm actually gonna select this box by vertex using faces. So I've, I've selected all the faces of this box and edit duplicate selection. So now I've got a duplicate selected. I'm going to move it up a little bit. 
hold down control or drag with mouse to move the screen and see now I've got two things here box 01 duplicate 01 as well as the original medkits parts so if you pick something from the list click on select you can deselect or select it so I just want this this new box selected and then scale um, there's a few scaling options you can like stretch stress this thing around so you can use user point in which case um, basically the center of the uh, scaling happens from where you start clicking and dragging your mouse so it spins kind of spins around this circle around the point I clicked we're not going to do that or we can use origin in this case it um, scales according to the uh, origin of this whole model we're not going to do that either I'm going to use center of mass so now it scales around this point here which is at the center of the selection there we go and then I'm gonna move it down like this scale it a little bit along the y-axis move it again Let's look at it from the left. Select and because I want it want the lid to kind of come over uh, the front side, I'm gonna scale it a little bit. But whoops, I need to enable the correct axis of scaling which uh, from front to back is the z-axis select and I'm gonna move these back vertexes because the lid kind of like it bends from here and it opens like it rotates so it's, it's not gonna come off so this side is gonna be attached and whoops I need to move the axis of movement as well there we go and now we want to delete some unwanted faces so you see this little edge um, it's basically the bottom of the lid that we're not gonna see we don't really need that need those two um, two polys there so we're gonna delete it and the easiest way of doing it is just first drag a selection box around the bottom of it and selects faces by vertex so basically selects every face that touches the vertexes that you've dragged the box around so now we've got the bottom, bottom selected but we also got the side selected so the simple way to uh, deselect the faces we don't want to delete is just drag another box around the top except with right click this time and holding the shift button so now we've just got that face selected and we can press delete to just delete the face 
Now you can see that that has disappeared. Now this has like a second part with angled edges. So I'm just going to copy the front part, move it down, move the edges like this. So I'm going to select wireframe, ensure that I'm in the front projection, click on select, and I'm going to disable select by vertex. I'm going to enable ignore back faces. So this time it should select the faces that the box touches. It doesn't um, depend on the vertices. So now you notice we've got the front of the lid selected. We also got the front of the whole box. So again, hold down shift, drag with the right mouse button to deselect. There we go. You can change the settings back to normal. I do this as a routine with every tool that I use in uh, 3D modeling or um, you know, image editing and so forth. It's, it's always a good idea to just get into a routine of changing the settings back to the most commonly used ones so that you don't end up constantly um, trying to remember what, you know, what you have to do, how you have to configure the tool. Anyway, I'm going to duplicate these two faces, duplicate selection, move it along the y-axis, scale it a little bit from user point. And then I'm going to select these two vertices, scale them horizontally from the center of mass. That seems about right. Now I want to connect these two faces, and I could do that manually, but I want to actually make sure that um, these these vertices are at the same point and that they're um, interconnected. So I'm gonna hold down Control, Shift, and press Y, and that's flattens all the selected vertices along the y-axis. If I press Control shift x it would flatten them along the x-axis. We don't want to do that. Flatten them with Control shift z and it would flatten them around the z-axis, but we would not see this uh, we, we would not see this in the uh, forwards, the, the front projection. Anyway, Next up, what we want to do is we want to weld those two points together to the top part of the lid. So we can press Control W, which is the same as weld together. Control plus W. I'm going to move this thing forwards a little bit so that it has a little more of a three-dimensional look to it. That's fine by me. Another thing we might want to do is, I think this could use a little bit of an edge 
just to bring out the shape like the edge on the outside of this this lid part so I'm going to show you how to make new vertices and new faces so I'm just going to actually take the vertex tool here and dot around some new vertices. I'm not going to put them in correct positions, I'm just going to put them a little bit to the side just so I can work with them without confusing myself. I'm going to select, select them, hold shift to select all of them. And you can sometimes accidentally deselect things when you're right clicking and moving your weave around so best thing to do is just unselect the select tool while you're doing that and you can click frame all to when you're changing from different weave to another to just see what you're working with frame all or frame selection Now notice my vertices all are all the way back there, so I want to move them to here. Go to front weave. And what I'm going to do is make life a little easier for me. I'm just gonna select all of this stuff and select the move tool and I'm gonna move this thing like 20 units along each dimension so that I can separately work on them. I just need to remember it was 20 units. This is so that I don't actually select other vertices that I don't want to select. So now I'm going to create new faces. I'm going to select the face tool and going counterclockwise just create new faces. So each face is created between three vertices. Just left click on the individual verses until uh, it creates a face. Next, I want to make. I'm going to move this up a little bit, so I'm going to try and remember that I'm moving it up by two units. So now I can clearly work on the bottom of the lid, bottom edge counterclockwise, this way, counterclockwise, this way. And then move those two back down by two units. Some of our faces are flipped. these ones appear correctly on the right hand side <coughs> whereas the bottom and the uh, angled left side are flipped so what we're going to do is go to front weave and select face by vertex 
shift and right click to deselect the things that you don't want so now we've got the flipped faces selected and next we want to do is face reverse vertex order now we've got all the faces the right way around okay so now we're gonna select this whole thing move it back 20 units along each dimension And remember I created those vertices a little bit to the side, now I'm going to move them. I don't want to move them along the y-axis, just the x-axis. And about there is good. I'm going to flatten these along the x-axis so that they're straight. Control shift x Control shift X Control shift X and Control shift X Do the same for the bottom one so the I want this line to be straight so Control shift Y because now we're working on the Y axis and these two con Control shift Y Control shift Y Okay, so that's looking much better, except that our shading seems to be a bit screwy. So now we want to learn how to use smoothing groups. basically just make sure the whole thing is welded together by selecting everything and pressing Ctrl W and next I'm going to select everything that is on the front so ignore back faces and select face and not by vertex just just drag a box around the holding on the front and make sure in uh, 3D Viv that that's the only stuff you got selected. Okay, now go to groups, smoothing groups, uh, press assign so that you're in assignment mode and just click on let's say one. Then go to the back of the model, the back projection, frame selection, repeat the same process. Get the back selected. So now I'm just gonna assign it to smoothing group 2. Go to the left side. I'm gonna, for the time being, hide the existing Half-Life Medkit model by selecting its groups and pressing hide so that it doesn't get in the way. And this I'm gonna assign to smoothing group 3. Right hand side. four top six bottom seven 
I'm also going to take these two individual edges here because I want the edges to kind of come out. I don't want them to be smooth in um, with the bottom edge. So I'm just going to assign those to number 8. So now let's have a look at our model in 3D view with smooth shaded mode. Let's take the wireframe overlay off. Yeah, that's looking a little better already. Okay. So now I'm just gonna create a new material. That is a texture. I'm going to make this 256 by 256. <coughs> and what I'm just going to do is I'm going to save this as a Windows bitmap. call it health kit. Also, oh yeah, almost forgot, you need to make it 256 colors. Let's just save it for now. Go to materials in your milk shape. I'm gonna create a new material in milk shape by clicking on new under the materials tab. And then where it says none here, I'm gonna import a material to it. So I'm gonna go to my folder, pick healthkit.bmp, bring it in, and then select all the parts of your box, your healthkit box. It's probably gonna be a bunch of different boxes, cylinders, duplicates, planes, whatever. Just make sure they're all selected and then click regroup. So now they're all one group. These two groups are the um, Half-Life med kit. Don't have to worry about that. So you want one group for each material. Ideally um, you'll have as much of the... Um, <coughs> you, you'll have as much of the model uh, covered by a single texture as possible. So now I've got this selected. I've got this selected and I'm gonna go to materials. Make sure I've got material 2 clicked which I just made. And click on assign. And if it successfully assigned it, well, you should have a black box under textured 3D mode. Right, so then next up I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna select by vertex. Select the whole thing. Go to project and side projection. Control and left mouse to shift my weave around. Shift and right click to drag a box. I'm going to deselect the back of the uh, back of the box so that only the front and the sides of the lid are selected. I'm going to go to Window Texture Coordinate Editor. And let's find our grouped object here. Change the scale to 1, just so we can see. You can move around in this view using 
control and left mouse as in the editor. Okay, so I'm gonna select region. I want to make sure the projection is front, and I'm gonna just drag a selection box that is roughly the shape of the med kit's front face. Maybe there. And then click on remap. So now we've UV mapped the front to the texture. Next, I'm going to go to side projection. <coughs> and I'm going to ignore back faces and don't select by vertex. Just, just select these two sides. I don't want to select the sides of the little lid because um, I want that to be textured along with the front. <coughs> and I might as well select both sides in the same go. So go to projection slash right and hold control, drag a box with the left mouse using the select tool with uh, no, uh, you know, this this thing unchecked. No no vertex selection. Okay, so let's just make sure we got the <coughs> right thing selected here. Yeah, both sides are pretty much going to look identical, so I'm going to go to Texture Coordinate Editor. Draw a region, maybe here. Change the projection to the left, click remap. We go to the back projection. Select everything that's on the back by <coughs> enabling ignore back faces, dragging a box around the whole thing with no vertex selection on. 3D weave, make sure you've just got the back selected and you can go to the window, texture coordinate editor, back projection, maybe draw a region somewhere down here. Remap. And then just let's do the top and the bottom. The bottom can just be the same as the top because nobody's going to see the bottom really. Actually, I'm going to uncheck ignore back faces. I'm going to just select both the top and the bottom at once. So you see what happens if you do that. It also selects the back face, um, or at least back according to what projection are you looking at? So I'm, I was looking at it from the top, so therefore the back face would be the bottom. Because I got ignore back faces unchecked, it also selected the bottom face. Okay, so now texture coordinate editor. I think we had some space here. Project in top. Remap. Okay. Last thing you want to do is to select the whole thing. Window Texture Coordinate Editor. And now you can see you can see that the uh, the whole thing is UV mapped onto this texture. So I'm going to take a screenshot using print screen. I'm going to go to my image editor. and paste it there. Oops.
and just select this area from my screenshot and copy it onto my texture. I might um, enable all the colors temporarily for editing purposes. You just need to make sure <laughs> that this box scales perfectly into the size of the texture that you're working on. So if if I had like a bigger texture like, like this, then I would need to scale this screenshot, this crop screenshot to cover the whole area. So I'm gonna just make a small simple texture for the time being. So I don't need to do that. Because the scale is one it's already the exact same size as my texture. So I'm just gonna create a new layer. I'm gonna create my texture on top of this. make it transparent so I can see what I'm doing. There we get a little red cross there. I'll make a, make a little transparent. Oh, blur is holding a little bit to soften the edges because I didn't use anti-alias. Actually, actually, I'm just gonna create a second layer here so I don't get any random black edges and just gonna color it with this this color. I don't really need the need the coordinates anymore for the polygons.
I'm gonna make this texture a little smaller. Doesn't need that big of a texture, so I'm just gonna shrink it by 50% by 50%. Remember to reduce the colors to 256. And now I'm gonna go to my editor, texture mode, go to materials, new material that we made. I'm just gonna reload the health kit model. Let's go to a texture there. We could improve the texture or the UV map for these edges, so I'm gonna edit the UV map. I'm just gonna set the scale, make sure that you've got this little pivot thing. You can use this pivot tool to place the pivot just in the corner and then you can shift your texture coordinates image to the corner as well and then click on scale maybe scale for now we see what we're doing here and I'm just gonna select these four vertices here click a move lock x coordinates because we only want to move them down I also want to move this box a little so that the texture kind of sits there snugly. There we go. We got something funny going on around the edge here. Can't really spot where it is. All this line. Oh, there it is. So that's where our problem area is. And take this vertex, move it down so that it lines up with the rest. Oh, looks like we've got two overlapping faces here. So yeah, I kind of forgot that actually I don't need to have these extra faces for the sides of the lid. I'm just gonna select these faces here. These are the ones that I want to select. And then just deselect these ones. Now we're left with that selection. And just delete. We don't have any duplicate faces now. Okay. So now the last thing we have to do is, um, because it's we imported this medkit model from Half-Life, we've already got a bone, a joint, uh, which is just box 01. Now if we unhide the medkit and go to joints and click a select assigned, 
we select all the vertices that are assigned to this bone and um, we're gonna look in later look at um, rigging models later but basically you just um, create a bunch of joints using the joint tool here you see the all the joints listed here you have the correct joint selected and you select a bunch of vertices and click on assign so all we want to do for now is select our box and assign them to the base bone joints box 01 assign now you can unselect by clicking on the side and uh, now let's see select assigned that's it it's assigned to the bone and now if by accident we left anything assigned uh, unassigned our model would not compile so we want to make sure that when we click select unassigned that we don't get nothing comes up like if this little edge here was an assign I accidentally forgot to select it while I was assigned the, uh, assigning the bones it would light up as red when I clicked select unassigned anyway now we can get rid of the original medkit delete and delete I'm gonna move the medkit that we made to the middle it sits on top of the bone <coughs> and that's this point we might as well save so I'm just gonna go to health kit I'm just gonna s save it as a milkshake source file Uh, but this doesn't save it as an SMD. To save it as a Half-Life SMD, we have to go to File, Export, Half-Life SMD, and navigate to your HealthKit folder. And then let's type W underscore HealthKit. It doesn't, doesn't really matter what the name is just click on save and make it the reference so this is important when you're saving animations you click on sequence when you're saving the models themselves the uh, meshes you click on reference okay no problems came up so that worked and then another thing because we created a new reference we're gonna take the existing QC file that's we got by decompiling the medkit. Open the QC file. I'm gonna rename model name to W Health Health Kit. And this is where the reference meshes are taken when the model is compiled. So you've got dollar symbol body studio W medkit. So this is the file that it refers to. So I'm going to rename that. And this contains the hitboxes, this contains the sequences. Hitboxes are uh, usually automatically generated. So actually, what I'm going to do is just I'm going to delete this manually defined hitbox and I'm gonna, I'm gonna let Milkshape auto-generate the hitboxes when we compile this model and I'm also gonna remove this because this is the thing that um, creates this file the separate texture file and um, it's, it's not necessary so we just delete that. If you wanted to scale the model you could do it here. I'm just gonna save this as 
W health kit dot QC tools half life compile QC file. Hold on, where did I save this? Oops, um, yeah, um, I wasn't using Notepad Plus. So it saved it as a text file. Just need to change the suffix to dot qc. There we go. Health kit. Compile. No problems showed up, so let's see. Now we have w health kit in our folder and we don't have any other files associated with it. So that's it. That's we, we've got our health box model in the game or in in the model waiver. That's the bone. And now we can see Milkshape has auto generated a hip box, which is perfectly fine. We got a fairly simple model. Basically what our milkshape does is it takes each bone in the model and every vertex that is assigned to that bone, it kind of just wraps a giant box around them. So you get one hit box for each joint. Anyway, that's it. Next video I'm gonna show you how to do animations and other stuff. Hope you enjoyed. Hope this helps you use software that is nearly 20 years old today.